Do you believe that a technology exists wherein speech can be encoded and transmitted via microwaves so that it can be heard inside the human skull without the use of a receiver? Hypersonic sound is perceived through the external ear of the subject and therefore cannot be classified as V2K, the military acronym for voice to skull technology, which relies on a scientifically documented phenomenon known as the microwave auditory effect. Persinger is saying is that virtually any mental state can be artificially injected into a human brain from an exterior source. The most frightening thing is that the means for doing this already exists in a fully operational form on a worldwide basis. Quote, the power levels for these amplitudes are similar to those associated with the signals generated globally by radio and communication system. Within the last two decades, a potential has emerged which was improbable, but which is now marginally feasible. This potential is the technical capability to influence directly the major portion of the approximately six billion brains of the human species by generating neural information within a physical medium within which all members of the species are immersed." Unquote. Dr. Persinger's message, minus the jargon, is that the entire human race can be controlled through the use of electromagnetic influence piggyback on television and radio networks or other technological means. There have been recent advances in acoustic technology which can transmit sound great distances with a very narrow target range. The long-range acoustic device is one such technology and is currently employed by both military and commercial sea vessels to deter potential attackers. In ordinary uh, sound perception, sound that goes into the uh, ear canal gets amplified by the small bones in the middle ear and then gets to the inner ear where the cochlea resides and in the cochlea is converted to electrical impulse. But fundamentally the physical phenomenon that enables it is mechanical movement of particles. So the mechanical wave transmitted by the bones of the middle ear gets converted at the inner ear into the uh, electrical impulses. But in the case of a micro, the auditory effect is the source is electromagnetic. So if you expose the biological tissue to a pulse of uh, microwave energy, the tissue expands and induces a vibration. Instead of going through the middle ear, the microwave induced vibration gets propagated to the inner ear directly and at the inner ear is converted to electrical impulses again. We're watching. <laughs> Taking the mickey out of innocent readers might seem a bit childish, but there's a reason why Dr. Pompey comes here to test his kit. A library is about the most sensitive area you can think of for background noise and generating sound that people don't want to hear. But with the audio spotlight, we can deliver sound specifically directly to people within the library without bothering the other people that are reading quietly. No. First, your voice is transformed into high-frequency ultrasound, sound so high no one can hear it. Ultrasound is highly directional, so, like a torch, it can be pointed at someone standing a long way away. Although they cannot hear the ultrasound, it causes secondary vibrations in the air around them, and it's that sound the person hears. No. For any new weapon system, it has always, always been necessary to test it to refine and perfect the weapon, whether chemical, biological, or nuclear, or in this case, microwave and radio frequency radiation weapons. Human beings have been used to perfect nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons by both the United States and its enemies. To illustrate how it is especially necessary to use human test subjects, we will examine one facet of the arsenal of these non-lethal weapons. Cyclotronic resonance refers to the ability to resonate or spin small particles with a given resonance frequency. Military doctrine for non-lethal weapons in this area is as follows. Initially, enemy armies or populations can be exposed to, sprayed with, a very small amount of chemical or biological agent. The quantity of chemical or biological agent used may be so small as to be virtually undetectable. Following exposure, the enemy population may be targeted with microwave or radio frequency radiation in the exact resonance frequency of the chemical or biological agent used. The toxic agent will begin to resonate or spin 
and will react with much greater speed or activity within the bodies of the target population, similar to the behavior of enzymes that make life possible. This greater reactivity may be millions of times greater than normal and would behave as if the person had been given a massive dose of chemical or biological agent, enough in fact to cause death. Cyclotronic resonance of chemical and biological agents allows entire armies or populations to be destroyed with only minute amounts of the agent in their bodies if they are attacked with non-lethal microwave weapons afterwards. In recent years, Delgado has shown that the behavior of monkeys can be altered using low-power pulsating magnetic fields. But in these experiments, there were no antenna implants. But even in this futuristic college tale, the subject still had to connect it to the machine by an electrode headset. That's remarkable. But not as remarkable as a real-life experiment where I was the subject of a prototype device designed to project images into the mind without electrodes. The prototype machine developed from Soviet scientific data could, according to some scientists, have a profound effect as a weapon of war. They are known as radio frequency or RF weapons because they operate in the radio frequency spectrum. Their existence is noted in this U.S. Department of Defense publication, which says the Soviets could use them to destroy components of missiles, to interfere with radar and other electronic systems, and even to alter human mind function. Dr. Larissa Volinskaya was heavily involved in Soviet electromagnetic research before being allowed to emigrate to the United States. She told CNN about Soviet research in electromagnetic effects, that a Navy laboratory conducted research into the use of an RF device for counterterrorism and special operations. It's possible to entrain a certain percentage of a population, apparently, with weak magnetic fields. The study also showed that RF signals could dissolve certain types of rat brain cells at a distance, causing disorientation and nausea. According to the scientists, even though the program was successful, the government never followed up on it. Officially, the Department of Defense will not comment because the subject area is, quote, too sensitive.